Bueno, aquí estamos, vinimos aquí al aeropuerto. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to say it in English, don't I? I'm sorry. We came here to the airport to say hello to Desi, to uh, welcome him back to Miami, because he is originally from Cuba, but of course he was brought up here in Miami. He had his education here. Slower, slower, yeah. A little bit slower. And the Mayor High and his father, Dr. Anas, our father Cliff. No, that's not your father. That's Desi's father. That's my father, yeah. Yeah, that's Desi's father. Who's on first? Well, anyhow, I'm Father Clee from the St. Michael's Church representative. We all came here to welcome Desi, and I'd like Desi to say a few words to the wonderful audience out there. I'm, wa I'm sure they're waiting for him to say something. Desi, will you please? Well, Donald, all I want to tell you is that I'm very, very happy that I was able to come down here to help we you with the uh, benefit on Sunday, and I hope that everybody shows up. And I know that he also has a wonderful show, and I just came down to do whatever little I can do to help out. I'm Sam Hurst, critic at large for Channel 4. This is my wife, Edie. How do you do? How does it feel? Have you ever seen Lucy in a big show before? I saw her do a seesaw, and I thought she was great. Do for the seesaw. Well, if she has any of your talent, I'm sure it's going to be a very exciting performance. Well, thank you very much. She's, she's uh, fantastic. She's, she's very good. I'm very proud of her. Very good. I'd like to talk to you after the show and you see bet. if we compare notes. You bet. Lots of luck. Thank you. Uh, how are you? I wanted to ask you how it feels to be the mother of a talented actress like Lucy. I never thought that I would have the good fortune to have two talented children like I have. Are you looking forward to the performance? Yes, very much. I haven't seen this one. Have you, you've seen Lucy before on stage, haven't you? Seesaw twice, and uh, I didn't see Mac. I haven't seen Mac and Mabel yet, and I'm very excited. I think this is a wonderful reception. It's exciting. Thank you very much. Some of the most influential movers and shakers in Little Havana today unveiled plans for a nine-day Latin festival which will take place next March. The fiesta will be called Carnival Miami, and the king of the festival, something similar to a parade marshal, will be Desi Arnaz, the king of the Latin beat. Organizers of the festival call him the most popular entertainer Cuba has ever produced. All I can tell you is that we're going to try to do our very best to make this a better carnival than we even had in Havana, pre-Castro. Arnez, who lives in Southern California, calls Miami his second hometown. It was here that he arrived after leaving Cuba in 1934. I love Miami. I've been here for many years. Graduated from high school here. And besides, all my compatriots are here, you know, Cuba. I, mean, I uh, was uh, in the American Army, and I've been in American City for a, lost, a long time, but my heart still belongs to Cuba, you know. Arnez will be back in town next March for Carnival Miami. Elliot Rodriguez, Channel 4 News, Little Havana. I'm going to do a number that they used to do. My little father did a number called Cuban Pete, and she did a thing called Sally Sweet, and I dug up the old costume, and it should be fun just to try and recreate it. What do you think of your father's performance here in rehearsal so far? What do you think? I think. I think he's wonderful. He sounds better than he ever did. He sounds great. He sounds just great. I'm loving it. How do you like working with him? Well, I haven't started yet, but I know I'm going to have a good time. I remember you always wanted to work with him. This is your well, we did. We worked once before at the Craft Music Hall show. My brother and I worked with Dad, but we haven't worked since. I mean, I've just been off doing other things, and so this isn't very long, unfortunately. It's only one quick number, but... Do you feel nostalgic knowing that you're going to be wearing your mother's dress and singing the same song as your mother's saying? What do you feel great. Doing? It fits. <laughs> 30 years ago, you know. And the actual dress? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And where did you find it? I've had it. I kept it. And I've always said, someday I'll need it for something, or, you know. And I actually wore it a long time ago once at a benefit performance with my dad to raise money for a park. And uh, I didn't fit into it too well then. I was a little bit heavier, but I fit just perfectly. In it now. And it's funny, because I'm the same age that she was when she wore it, so it's interesting. Yeah. 
Not that interesting, but no, is, sort of interesting. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're gentlemen, we didn't ask. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, thank you very much. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. About. I read about your childhood and I was fascinated by it because you had a very normal childhood and everyone always assumed that Hollywood people are brought up totally different, but you weren't. I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I didn't. I don't know about everybody else's childhood. So. Well, for example, I read where your mother was there to say goodbye to you in the morning and make dinner sure. for you at night. Oh, sure. Yeah. She didn't get a chance to make dinner too often because she was working, right. but she was always there okay. for dinner. Yeah, she was always there for dinner, and uh, we stopped her from making dinner as often as possible. <laughs> no, we had a really good childhood. I'm I'm very pleased with the way I was brought up. And I read also about a Christmas present that you had one time when you, when you were eight years. They converted the garage into a theater. Was that your start? Yeah, I think I had been asking for that for a long time. I just wanted to put on plays of my own that I would write and find the music for and do. It was very nice of my mother. Which that had to do with our good grades. If we got good grades, she promised us a theater. So one was connected with the other all the time. That's good. You know. In the beginning, you were constantly compared to five years to I actually, uh, I don't know. I just, dis I disagree with that. I was lucky. I don't think I've been compared to her all that much because we sort of went off into different fields. I went into theater right away, and uh, not by choice or you know to to try to get away from her. It was just something that uh, I just did. And so we're not really alike in that sense anymore. I don't do the same kind of comedy that she does all the time. I mean, I can, but I'm usually into musicals or something. So, uh, and Desi is a film personality, my brother Desi, so we're, I guess we've chosen other fields of Did the same industry. Did you do industry. that perhaps so that you wouldn't be compared? No, I said I didn't do it on purpose, I don't think. It just sort of was what was most natural to me. Like performing on the stage as opposed to choosing to be in front of a camera all the time. I prefer to be on the stage. Or terrified of cameras! <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents give you any tips, any advice, knowing that you're going to be working? Sure, with absolutely. Um, I don't know specifically off the top of my head. Oh, today? today? No, kind of a man. He doesn't. We just work together. You know, we trust each other. We don't give tips. We just help. We just help each other. I haven't worked with them in a long time, and I, I don't know. Uh, I think it'll be the same as it always was. Just fun. You know, this is like I said. This is so short. This is only one day, one number, one you know, one night. It's too bad. I'd like to tour with him for about six months. That would be fun. You know, and uh, I said they they told me he was going to speak Spanish for the whole night, you know, as he's introducing all the people in the, at the uh, Orange Bowl, and it's too bad, because I probably won't understand a word he's saying, <laughs> every other word I'll get, because he, he speaks English about the same way I speak Spanish, which is very poor, but I'm working on it, I'm working on it. How about your mom, the she doesn't Spanish either. Yeah, she does a little bit. You know, it's like it's like anything. You have to do it all the time or you forget. I studied it in school and I s spoke real well, but then you graduate, you get all your grades, and then nobody's, you know, I don't, I don't live with my dad, and he doesn't speak Spanish at home very much. When I was growing up, he didn't speak Spanish at all at home. He was trying to learn English, you see, so none of us learned how to speak very much Spanish. I learned zapato, maquilla, pan, you know, all those things you need, like where are my shoes, things. That's about it. If I lived in Florida, I would speak fluent Spanish. If I live in New York, I speak Spanglish. <laughs> What did your mom say when she heard the two of you were working together here? She doesn't know. She doesn't know. If she finds out, she's going to kill me. She's going to say, Who told her she could wear my dress? <laughs> Thank you very much. You're First cut. First cut. How do you? Are you rolling? Oh, thank you. How do you feel about people? I love Miami. You know, it's the first place I came from Cuba was Miami. Really? By the way, in high school, it's high school. I lived here for a long time. It's like my second hometown. You know? How do you feel? I got a lot of friends and family. And what about kind of Miami? That's something they didn't have when you were here. No. Well, we had it in Cuba, but not in Miami. So maybe this will become like it used to be in Cuba. They had a lot of wonderful acts and music for tomorrow night at the ball. So I hope they enjoy it. Comparsas and muchas cosas. Do you feel nostalgic working with your daughter? I love it. 
Wouldn't you know it? Did you give your daughter some fatherly advice when you knew you were going to be working with her? That what? Did you give your daughter fatherly advice? What advice have you given her, knowing she was going to be in the business too? Oh, I didn't give her any advice. I just tell her to keep loving me as much as she does and as much as I love her. She's my best friend. Thank you. Yo estaba en casa de madrina, que yo empezando a buscar, en el sol de la esquina, ella viva en el manga. ¡Ay, ay, mamá! His hair may be a little grayer, his voice a little raspier, but Desi Arnaz has not changed that much. For years, he and his wife Lucy entertained the world with their special brand of humor. The now classic I Love Lucy just may be the most popular TV show ever. Today, the show still can be seen around the world. Tonight, we're going to meet Desi as he looks back at his past on a visit to his high school alma mater and at a reunion and jam session with some old friends. <laughs> He's lived a life most would admire, but along with the fame and fortune, there have been many struggles. His family was forced to leave Cuba when Desi was a teenager and leave behind an affluent lifestyle. His grandfather, a noted doctor, his father, a leading political figure. He had to start all over again in Miami, only this time without money. I, I had to eat. The only thing I knew how to do was play the guitar. Some crazy nut offered me five dollars a night to play the guitar and sing. He worked with Xavier Cugat and then led his own band, but his big break came after being fired from a job and in desperation started the conga craze. I started thinking of the carnivals in Cuba, they do the conga, you know, like one, two, three, kick, and one, two, three, kick. And it's very simple, you know, anybody can do that. I mean, whether you use 85 or five, he assembled the fired band members and... I got a bottle of Bacardi rum. I said, "Get take two, three shots of this. And I said, this is what you're going to do now. You're going to go and go, pum, 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 pum. And that is the way the conga started in the United States. <laughs> and since then, I've never been out without a job. He went on to New York, opened a club, La Conga. It was there that composers Rogers and Hart saw him perform and hired him to be in their musical Too Many Girls. He made the film, met and married a young actress named Lucille Ball, and the rest is but almost wasn't history. For the network executives didn't believe that a story about an American girl married to a Cuban bongo player would be accepted by the public. It was. Since 1951, millions and millions of adoring fans have watched I Love Lucy, that somewhat zany housewife bringing her daily dilemmas to her somewhat perplexed and hard to understand husband. Joined by their two cohorts in crime, Fred and Ethel Mertz, the show is a TV phenomenon, and Desi has much praise for Lucy. You know, the one, one good thing about her, she never mind looking messed up or wet or with mud in her face. I mean, you know, most girls are always worrying about their hair and everything. You know, she never cared. You know, if he was funny and if he was good, she was fine, you know. I love Lucy and she loves me. I love Lucy is something that only happens once in a lifetime. If you're lucky enough to have it happen at all, this is Desi now lives in California, but recently visited Miami, not as a bongo player, but as the invited future parade king of the largest Hispanic festival to be held in the United States, Carnival Miami. A special tour was planned, filled with many memories for Desi. First, he visited with childhood friends from his native Santiago. Then a quick game of dominoes and a return visit to his Miami Beach High School, St. Patrick's. Desi graduated in 1937, was a forward on the basketball team, and now, 45 years later, tries his hand at landing a few quick shots. And he offered a few words of his philosophy to the children. Never give up, see? 
keep going. Determination. That's the name of the game. Don't give up. You fall down, get up, try again. Desi is always trying. He's published his memoirs called A Book and has just recently released a record album that includes musical memories from the I Love Lucy show and today reminisced with two of his musical arrangers, Marco Rizzo and Rene Touze. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, Elvis Presley looked like he was standing still when I, when I went on. <laughs> the Cuba <Cuban> Elvis. <laughs> Time has passed. Lucy and Desi are now divorced, and little Lucy and Desi Jr. have grown to be quite talented and famous performers. And Desi is now a grandfather. Holiday, 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 there is something comfortable about listening to Desi, something that reminds us of the I Love Lucy show, a show that brought us all laughter and warmth during decades of turmoil and tragedy. And for this, Desi considers himself lucky. I got lucky in show business. Huh? I don't think it's on any, any other country in the world that you could do what, what have happened to me here. You know? Starting from nothing, not even knowing the language. And I'm not a great musician. I'm not a great singer. I just get away with murder. <laughs> that is, killing his audience with humor and making us all feel welcome in his TV home. Lucy, I'm home! I'm very happy that that's the way our success turned out, was to bring friendship, and the children like it, and that everybody got a good laugh, and relax, and have fun.
would be used to the reunion of a Cuban family, but this one was different. Father, son, and daughter got together to perform, and crowds came to see. That's because they were Desi, Desi Jr., and Lucy Arnaz, and it happened last week at Carnival Miami. I love Miami. You know, it's the first place I came from Cuba was Miami. Mm-hmm. I graduated from high school. It's high school. I lived here for a long time. It's like my second hometown. How do you feel? I got a lot of friends and family. And what about Carnival Miami? That's something they didn't have when you were here. No. no we had it in Cuba, but not in Miami. So maybe this will become like it used to be in Cuba. They call me Sally Sweet. I'm the queen of Ocho Street. But I've got to get everything ghosted. Take a good look. If you have some recollection of seeing this scene before, you have a good memory. Excuse me, Mr. V. Yes, ma'am. Have the Cubans a different beat? If they have, will you teach me to chick, chick, chicky boom, chick, chicky boom? I dug up the old costume. You feel great, it fits. Do you feel nostalgic wearing the same dress and singing the same song that she sang? I actually wore it a long time ago once at a benefit performance with my dad to raise money for a park. And uh, I didn't fit into it too well then. I was a little bit heavier, but I fit just perfectly in it now. And it's funny because I'm the same age that she was when she wore it. Did you give your daughter fatherly advice, knowing she was going to be in the business too? Well, I didn't give her any advice. I just tell her to keep loving me as much as she loves and as much as I love her. She's my best friend. Suzanne Lasky, New Center 7 in Miami. Tom Hanks is about, and there's Lucille Ball on camera with her husband, Gary Morton. 
Only her second appearance at the Academy Awards. She's presenting with Bob Hope, isn't she? Correct. I believe. Gary Morton and Lucille Ball. Hi, Gary. Hello. How are you? Hi, darling. How are you? Fine. Happy to be here. I just said something, and I don't know if I was incorrect. Is this only your second time at the Academy Awards? No, not at all. I'm about as incorrect as you can get. Yeah, just about. I have no many. I have no idea how many, but many more than two. Did you and Bob Hope tonight? Yes. Bob and I are introducing um, Academy Award winners of the next generation. Oh, the you kids are, you know. <laughs> Gary, give us yes, a, perspective, a Gary Morton perspective on what's going on here. I think it's very, very exciting. The rental business for limos and the rental business for tuxedo. <laughs> and your rental tuxedo looks great. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Very, very much. Nice. 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 Wonderful. Hi, Christina. She's watching. Oh, God bless her. Hi, Christina. I love you. Right. Thank you, Lucy. Happy day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for waiting. Bye-bye. Okay, if you're joining us live. Friends and television are mourning the death of Desi Arnaz tonight. The Cuban-born entertainer teamed with his red-headed comedian wife, Lucille Ball, in I Love Lucy, one of the classic television series. This one is yours, friend. Oh. Desi Arnaz was 69 years old. He had been suffering from lung cancer for several years. Arnaz and Lucille Ball divorced in 1960. They had two children, Desi Jr. and Lucy. Lucy was with her father when he died early this morning. I can say that he died with me in my arms and that we loved him very much. I can tell you not to smoke and I can tell you that I would like him to be remembered as the man who was responsible for Lucy, the I, the I and I love, and that um, he loved all of you very much. The family says a memorial service is planned in Hollywood later this week. His body will be cremated. got the most gorgeous girl right by my side, Lucille Ball, right? The major risk in this sort of thing is, uh, is, in, is in the operating room, at least initially. And the fact that she's uh, come through that well uh, makes us all quite optimistic. He'll rid it in winter if we're having a baby. My baby, sure, died without in a limb to our family tree. Oh, oh Johnny, you? what a wonderful surprise. Well, you know, it's a delightful surprise to see you here at NBC. I was just going to say the same thing about you. A private duty nurse was at Lucille Ball's bedside when she went into cardiac arrest at 5 a.m. Pacific time. The medical staff was alerted immediately and continued to work on her until she showed no signs of life. 47 minutes later, Lucille Ball died. Hospital spokesman Ron Weiss said the cause of death was not triggered by the emergency open heart surgery she underwent just eight days ago. We now believe that the uh, Lucille Ball's death was caused by a rupture of the abdominal aorta. That is a portion of the aorta that is uh, in the abdom abdomen and is far from the heart. It would have produced significant bleeding. The attack came as a complete surprise. The 77-year-old comedian was making a remarkable recovery from surgery. Lucy was walking, talking, and according to her daughter, even joking. And I asked the nurse, I said, can I please just lift the mask a little bit so that I can hear what she's trying to tell me? She said, all right, a little bit. And I lifted the mask and she said, wouldn't you know, this was the day I was supposed to get my hair color done. <laughs> Condolence cards can be sent uh, to her family, care of Cedar sinai Over the last week, Cedar sinai Medical Center has been flooded with calls, flowers, and get well cards. Today, operators consoled hundreds of dazed and disbelieving fans and friends over the phone. They all want to know if it's all right to send condolence cards and things to the family, care of the hospital, and it is. 
Shortly after her death, singer Lou Rawls time. just happened to be at the hospital for a personal checkup. She demanded the best out of everybody that she worked with. She demanded it in a way she wasn't, uh, you know, badgering people, but you just, when you went in to work with her, you went in knowing that you had to be on top of everything and be the best that you could, because that's what she was. She was a great lady. The medical staff, too, was saddened by the loss of a woman who became part of their hospital family. Everybody loves Lucy. The whole world does. Uh, we've gotten calls from all over. Her fans have been, without a doubt, the nicest, most courteous people. Uh, she's going to be greatly missed. Lucille Ball began her career as a New York showgirl in 1926. Then it was on to the movies, 75 in all. While on location for one of her early films, Too Many Girls, Tony Award-winning producer George Abbott sent her out on a blind date. And I asked Desi to pick her up, but they were sitting at a table for two. So when we got our table, I sent a word, come on over. They said, no, they're here, so they might as well stay. Well, they never left. <laughs> Later, Lucy and Desi formed Desi Lou Productions and created some of the top TV comedies of the 50s and 60s. Probably the most memorable was I Love Lucy. It's so tasty, too. <laughs> Dancer June Taylor remembers the last time she saw Lucy. It was at a memorial service for Jackie Gleason. We're all very sad, sad to think that she's gone, because they were the king and queen of television. Today, people around the world are remembering Lucille Ball as the woman who made them laugh. She was the queen of comedy. I think we all learned something from her to laugh at ourselves. The only thing I could really say is, I love Lucy.